All right. We are back and refreshed from our little break. We're, we're back in action, dude. Did you guys have a break? Catastro's live. We took a break. Mm. Oh, yeah. Camp took a break. Catastro took a longer break. Oh, that's a long break. Yeah. And we are, we are back with Tanner. We have so much that we can finally talk about. It is really exciting. Just like three days ago, we dropped the first single off the album, Muse. Muse. And we announced our final album until the end of time. Yeah. There we go. It's exciting, man. Yeah. So uh, last week, we, like Ryan just said, we announced our new and final album, and it is called Until the End of Time, which will be coming out when, Tanner? We don't know yet. <laughs> this fall. In the fall. Well, yeah. specifically, we don't know, but the fall. Oh. Do we need to cut this out? No, just oh, keep okay. going. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, scared. No, yeah. I'm like, am I leaking too much? Oh, no, right I now? was like, am I supposed to know this date? Because I don't. Yeah. No, it's uh, yeah. So we're, we're we're releasing in the fall. We still have some stuff that we're keeping close to our chest, but for the most part, we can finally talk about all the shit we've been working on for the last two years. And um, you know, let's start with Muse, and then we can like roll into kind of the process of how we ended up finishing this album and what it feels like right now to finally be rolling that out. Yeah, so um, on the 31st, we dropped the first official single uh, on Until the End of Time. And <laughs> what? You just said that for the third time in a row. <laughs> <laughs> yes. In case you guys forgot. Oh, man. No, but yeah, I mean, it's this one is super special to me. Like Muse, to me, is one of the most impactful tracks on the entire album. And we were kind of planning on putting it out later, but... It originally started as an original idea with Andy where we were going to do it for the next Bones uh, album. So it was just like an acoustic track and we wanted to make the next Bones a little more special and do like an original for it instead of just repurposing like our old music. And so it was the last song that we wrote and completed with Andy together in a room. So it was originally supposed to be more of like a bonus track that was the only original song on Bones. Yeah. That wasn't like a acoustic rendition of an existing song from what I remember. Yeah. Yes. And then, you know, after everything happened, uh, we realized, you know, that was the last song that Andy fully finished vocal wise that was signed off by him as like, this song's done. I'm done tracking vocals on this. So when it came time to start figuring out what songs were going to be on the album, we obviously realize like this needs to be put on the actual album instead of yeah i mean our, originally our first plan wasn't really like hey let's finish the album it was kind of we had already been working on bones a little bit so it was like hey let's just finish bones because we can do do it quick and then we realized how important it was to come back with you know the final material that we had been starting with andy and you know we had only had seven days really in the studio maybe even less like five days I think it was more like five, yeah. Maybe four. <laughs> Maybe four. <laughs> Maybe four days in the studio and we had like really rough demo ideas and we've turned it into, you know, our longest full length album we've ever had as a group. That's great. I didn't even realize that until right now. So yeah. we, we don't have any any albums that are more than 14 songs. No. So yeah. It's pretty epic because <clears throat> when initially when we had to look through what we had, we were afraid we weren't even going to have enough to make a full album. I was even, afraid even we weren't was, even going to have enough for an EP. I was yeah. kind of thinking like with what we had and what we were left to work on, I didn't know if we were going to be able to get half of what we even did have into like full releasable track. So I was like, we might have three songs out of this. And I was happy with those three songs, but it was kind of just, you know, you get into the, oh, I wish we had more time. I wish we could do this. And all these things that I was kind of always thinking about where it's, it's out of your control and you just kind of got to do what you got to do. But uh, yeah, with Muse, I mean, that we went right back in the studio. It was within two months, I think, right, of Andy passing. I think so. Yeah, two months. Dude, I'm pretty sure it was under two months. I'm, I'm, if I'm pretty sure it was like a month and a half after Andy passed that we decided, like, hey, let's work on Muse. And the first thing that we did was we had our f good friend Danny Torgerson, who is on the Astro Camp episodes. Yeah, uh, he composed. Uh, some string parts with a group of string players. We sent him the song. We're like, hey, we, we know this song needs additional production. Like, it's going to be on the album. We're not just going to put it on Bones. So, um, 
so we did a session. The first session we ever did uh, after everything happened was was working on music and recording those string players. What do you guys remember about that session? Well, I think that's when that's what kind of led us to realize that it should be on the album, right? Cause, right. Because that like having the string players there and everything was just it just made the song much more emotional and just given the situation, I feel like it just raised the importance of the song even more. Yeah, and we were so like, it was so, so fresh for us that I remember like just bawling in the studio once the strings started playing and then like laughing about it because I was like, dude, this is so cheesy. I've <laughs> got this like string, like, you know, a violinist and a cello going in the background while I'm just sitting here fucking crying on this couch. Like I felt like a loser, and, but it was just, it. it's such an emotional song and like the lyrics are so raw and real and kind of like hopeful that it's definitely one of those tracks where you go back and you listen to it with a different point of view now and it kind of has a whole new meaning than what it did when we wrote it you know and i think a lot of it is the way andy's vocal is recorded and the way it just sounds so raw and intimate exactly intimate and it's just it's not like any of his other vocals that have been recorded in the past well and it's because you know with bones that's how we would do it we just go like let's do these as fast as possible kind of it's like we want them to be raw we want them to be real because it's an acoustic track and so we weren't really focused on like, hey, let's get the super polished. It was kind of like, this is for Bones and it's going to be what it is. But then like after the strings, we're like, all right, that was when we decided to make it a full band track because then we're like, all right, well now if it's on the album, we can do kind of whatever we want with it. We're not limited to just acoustic instruments. And we went and we started reworking that ending, which it became like one of my favorite parts on the album. Yeah, I think... Once we once we fully reworked the song, knowing it was going to be on the album, um, it it really turned it for me personally. It turned into one of the most important songs we've ever made as a band, and I I really think it's like one of the best songs we've ever made as a band. When I think when we added that that outro to it, it was a no brainer that it just had to be the last song on the album. Yeah, for yeah, sure. it's just so epic and big, and we've never done anything also, that yeah, sounds like it. To say that or not? But. No, yeah, it's fine. No, I, I think that's cool. It is. Yeah, it's the last song on the album for a reason too. Mm -hmm. and yeah, I remember, uh, you know, after reworking it and uh, you know finishing it, showing all of our close friends and family the different songs that we had that we were working on. That was the one song that made every person that knew us and knew Andy. They had like an intense emotional reaction to the song. So. I think that also played into why we decided to put this song out first because not only is it one of the few songs on the album that is just entirely Andy without any features, but I think it just, I think it accurately represents our band in a lot of ways. Um, and, and, and the more um, emotional and heartfelt side of our band and side of Andy, like you were saying, the lyrics are intensely meaningful especially after everything like it's so weird to listen to that song after the fact because you know there's lyrics in there like uh don't tell us that we're broken when we're healing like there's a lot of really heavy hitting lyrics in that song yeah. that hearing it in the context now are like why you know why were those lyrics made well, and when we day, wrote that with know? andy like andy was struggling at that time and it was like not a great place and it was kind of good to get these like hopeful you know, kind of more brighter side of life kind of lyrics out of him while he was also, you know, having a difficult time. And it was, uh, and but it kind of comes through where there's like this contrast of, you know, it's like hard to do good. And that's, I don't know. It, it was kind of like the duality of his like own battles and stuff. So there's a lot in the song that I just like, I love it. And it sounds nothing like any of the other tracks we've ever really done before. And it's just, to me, the perfect way to cap off this album. It's funny that that's the first song we chose to work on, but it's like going to be the last song on the album and the most, one of the mo more meaningful ones, I would say. Yeah, yeah, for sure. One of my favorite parts of the song is when Andy references that place, you know, uh, yeah. for me, that was a very full circle moment listening, listening to the song over the past year or so, uh, that place, you know, is my dad's favorite song. And, uh, when I think you guys might remember me telling you this, but when my dad got remarried, he bought me uh, his gift to me as his best man was this ring that he got custom made for me that has the sound waves of that place, you know, printed on the ring. 
Nice. And so I don't know, just like hearing Andy sing that after we lost lost him. And I think our fans that have been around since, you know, the Facts EP, is that what that song's on? The Facts EP? I think so. Yeah. It's like the first I'm pr- uh, uh, collection of songs that I was in the band, like, yeah, wrote with you guys. So. Yeah, for when, sure. When we started to go downhill when you joined the band. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I don't know. For me, that's, that's like a cool full circle thing that, uh, you know, just him singing that we lost Andy and my dad's not here anymore. And it's just very, for me, I get like a lot of meaning out of that. Yeah. Yeah. The song's good, man. I'm, I'm like just excited that people are finally getting to be able to hear it. Cause it's been over two years now. Um, and it's taken a lot of work and it's been like really difficult and a really challenging different way of songwriting for all of us. And I'm just kind of, I'm really proud of what we've been able to do. I'm excited for everyone to be able to hear everything else that's, you know, going into this album. But maybe we should talk a little bit about the process of how to get the album. Because like you said, Muse is one of three tracks that are just Andy all the way through. And the rest of the album, we did have to get some help from our friends and people in the scene that, you know, we respect and we love. And um, it, let's just get into like the songwriting side because it was, it was different. Yeah. Um, well, obviously, like you just said, there was, you know, once we started going through all of the sessions and opening everything up, we realized that we had a lot of really cool ideas. We had a lot of really great vocal takes from Andy and like rough starts of songs that we were, you know, in the process of writing. And we kind of had to realize like, all right, we got a missing verse here. We've got a missing chorus on this song. We've got, uh, you know, only this many vocals on this song. So it was like having all these missing pockets and just holes everywhere. And I remember, I don't know about you guys, but I remember that first week we opened up all of the sessions. It was kind of terrifying because it was like, how much do we even have? Yeah. I mean, and but at the end of it all, I think us being so limited with what we can do, it kind of helped us hone in on each song and actually build them into something like way bigger than we expected we were forced to sit and just work on something Mm -hmm. and like yeah like it felt i remember it feeling like there was just this massive brick wall in front of us and we had to like slowly just like chisel at it until we realized like okay all right this is starting to work there'd be songs where he would have this perfect like rap verse and then it would just go into like gibberish and you'd be like damn like because if only that was finished that would make the song better but we had no control over it so it's like find what we do have if it's just like this vocal but the vocal is a cool idea it's just not fitting over the music anymore we would cut all the music and just listen to just andy's vocal and write an entire new musical background to the song to make it fit and we had to do that for multiple tracks and then you know just seeing like are we even going to be able to get enough people to fill in these spots without making it feel like it's just like a compilation album like we need this to be cohesive and still feel like you know the next best catastrophe album and on the other hand, we had, I feel like we had a lot of good instrumental ideas that we kind of just had to bail on given, you know, we didn't have vocals to them. So yeah, there's helped. a lot of like B side things that we have that like, yeah, they just either wasn't enough or it just didn't fit exactly with what Andy had first right. started. I, I do remember that <clears throat> the initial conversations of uh, us really not wanting it to be want anything to feel like this after the fact thing where it's like oh they're just giving us like the scraps they had left over it was really important that like all right if this is going to be an ep or an album or however big we can make this every song needs to truly be an amazing song and you know the 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 correct person that's you know being featured on this song it needs to be the right person for that song and i feel like we really i'm i'm so happy that we took our time to do that and didn't feel this like rush or urgency because in the beginning i i think we kind of struggle with that a little bit feeling like damn we got to hurry up and put something out because we're so used to every year putting out a new album and then touring and you know uh it's hard because time does go on you know and so for us it's so fresh and new still because it's we've been living this every day for two years and but you, there is this is there a such thing as too long to wait before we put it out do we need to hurry and get this done and then another like we don't want to we can't rush this it's the most important thing that we have so on the balance, other hand we yeah. were kind of there we would go into the studio and we'd work on it really hard but then 
we would take like a month or two off where we wouldn't because I mean, it was just, it was difficult mentally. And we were all figuring out our lives at the same time as also trying to figure out this album and that whole process. So it's pretty, it's pretty like, draining. Yeah. D- it dude, was a lot. That, you know, that, that really is a solid point because not only are we all grieving through this like tremendous loss, we're also doing something that even if we weren't grieving a loss like that, if the, the, what the task that was in front of us was difficult for anybody. Yeah. So it was like, we were dealing with these two very intense challenges and uh, I'm, I'm just like really proud of the band. And I feel like Andy would be really proud of us too. Uh, there's multiple songs where it's like, if we kept it the way that it was originally, it was like, this could be like an album track where it's kind of like in the middle of the album that isn't necessarily going to get a whole lot of attention, but still cool. And then we were able to turn those songs into like what now is when we we're showing like people in the industry that are working on it with us. They're like, this is the best song we've heard from you guys. And it's just like, you know, it, it stretched us and like our abilities and like the way we think about music. And there's been so many times in the past where we've probably given up on ideas where now we can be like, Hey, we actually know how to get through this roadblock and get to the other side of it. So it's, I don't know. It's like made us, we've had this album and it's made us like better as people because we're just growing and learning how to get through grief and all this stuff. But it's like better as songwriters, better as everything. Like it's just, this album has helped a lot. I think with the features, it's even more special because most of the people like I, that we have featured on it helped with the writing process. So it was kind of just, it's not just they come in and just write a verse. It's like they're actually helping build the song. So yeah. Yeah. Not only that, but they were specifically, uh, you know, people that we knew Andy would be mm-hmm. stoked that they're on the record. They're right. people that for the most part, pretty much everyone on the album are people that Andy was friends with and that Andy knew or looked up to. Yeah. Right. So you know, it's if, kind if of he insane. knew of a few of these artists on the album, he would be shitting himself. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah dude. I mean, I still kind of, am. Yeah. I like forget about it. And I'm looking through like what we have, cause we're still getting uh, some finals back for a couple of them. And I'm just like, Oh man, this is going to be crazy yeah. when this comes out. So I know it's, it's, it's so crazy. Cause yeah, we've had to work in different blocks and like really get in the weeds and like work on all this, this different stuff and to see it all finally coming together and be able to announce the new era to the world. And like, invite all the fans into this new chapter which you know we're all we've all had a lot of fear and a lot of you know conversations about how this is going to look moving forward it's it's scary dude we don't know what it's like putting an album out without andy we've it's, never put an album out without andy it's really easy to do it the wrong way it feels like too you know so we're tiptoeing across a lot of problems right and we're gonna judge ourselves more than anybody else really would so it's like we're thinking like is this gonna look bad are people gonna interpret this in a wrong way or the right way and at the end of the day it just kind of comes down to i think like what do we think is best because that's how the band always worked was it was the four of us coming up with what was right and what we needed to do and you know anything that's good for us is good for Andy, and anything that's good for like Andy's family is good for us. So, and I think the last thing we wanted is to be this old band that's like hanging on to something. E- right. You know what I mean? When we shouldn't be, but it doesn't feel that way. You know? No, yeah, it doesn't feel that way. It feels like it feels like this is the new beginning. You know, um, especially like with the release of Muse mm-hmm. and people getting to hear a track that's fully Andy and. Uh, Going back to what you mentioned on um, how this creating this album has completely changed your perspective on like how music is made or like for me, it's completely shattered my uh, just idea of what like producing music is and like making music because like you said, we've had so many ideas over the years where like, you know, we'd write a verse and a chorus and then we'd just kind of give up on it and then move on to something else because we could. And it makes me wonder like, how many times over the years could we have just like maybe spent another day on, on that idea and it could have really, we could have had a breakthrough. You know what I mean? Like you don't, it, I guess it's taught me that in a lot of ways you have to have that kind of willpower to just like keep pushing because if you don't, you're just not going to know what lies ahead. Right. Well, and a lot of that though was us just stacking ideas. So we would like to you know, come with a verse chorus and be like, okay, that's cool, but let's move on to something else and keep going. And I feel like Andy also 
like to move things along like that too he wanted to get things i mean he wanted to drop new music like a week after we put out a new album (laughs) and our manager would be like dude we just put out an album we gotta like market this and go on tour he's like well let's just drop an ep yeah and like he just uh, that was one really cool thing about andy is he just wanted to move like he just wanted to put more music out and i think it was that need to like endlessly express himself yeah and i mean thank god in retrospect that he was like that because if not we would not have all of these ideas to use that were recorded some of the tracks on this were like half written ideas from like sucker or like washed and we just like had a cool vocal and we're just like let's try this vocal i went through every single recording we had of andy that exists and we took our favorite parts and that was another thing that was hard of like getting a cool vocal or like something where you're like this is awesome and it's from andy but then deciding like it's not going to fit with the rest of the album and then you know that's a difficult decision to be like hey we're just gonna have to hold on to this one for ourselves yeah you know, or, it's like, or when he had awesome melodies but it's just gibberish it's yeah like, damn we can't even use this <laughs> but i think there's a there's a single that's going to be coming out in the future too where it's like the perfect melody and the lyrics are right until the last line and it's just gibberish and we're like fuck it let's just leave the gibberish in there and you know we do and i i remember doing like harmonies over it and matching his gibberish so that it you can't even really tell until you pay attention but it was kind of one of those things where you're playing this line of i don't want it to feel unfinished but it is real and that's how it was and it's a very like chili peppers thing to do which is kind of how we started this band was just that kind of vibe so it makes sense sometimes but obviously we can't have the whole album be this unfinished thing and now that we kind of have it all finished and we're listening to it all in a row it's like it doesn't feel like that at all it just feels it like feels a, epic yeah it's a crazy <laughs> cohesive it doesn't album. feel like it's pieced together yeah. like a mixtape or anything like that it feels like a like a real album yeah so i mean like just to make it clear as like a statement i guess because I'm sure people are wondering like what this album is going to be and how it is. It's like every song has Andy on it. Um, A few of them are just Andy the whole song through. And the other ones that we couldn't get full takes or whatever, you know, we were able to get some amazing people to come into the studio that all people that either knew Andy or that Andy like really loved um, to finish these parts. And, you know, the scene really stood up behind us for this one. Yeah. Yeah. If you've been listening to our band for a long time, you can expect to, uh, be well aware who a lot of these artists are on this on this album it's wild bro yeah (laughs) it's absolutely insane yeah i mean it's the way that not only the fans have supported us and you know just been like cool with us taking this much time without even you know we've been dark for like six months now on social media and that would normally tank any kind of (laughs) creative endeavor but uh like they've been super cool and had our back and they're constantly messaging us like hey, we're ready, you know, when you guys are. And then also just the bands and like Dirty Heads in particular, we were in the studio with them, you know, the night Andy passed away. And so they've really been there this entire time, kind of overlooking a lot of the stuff that we've done, Jared in particular. Yeah, and, um, and they were the first people to be like, hey, whatever you guys need, like we're going to help you finish this. Yeah. Which is, you know, means a ton. I mean, we had them fly in like they came to Arizona and came to our studio and hung out with us. And, oh, you know, there's so many other bands that I deserve so much shout out right now that we just can't quite say yet. But, um, yeah, it's just like the love we felt and the support we've had from everyone in the scene that, you know, we really care about and we know cares about us. Like they helped make this happen too. So it's definitely a team effort. Yeah. It's been like a major test of delayed gratification because, you know like while working on this stuff for the past two years it's so hard to not like we just want to share this with everybody and now that we're finally able to start rolling this stuff out it it doesn't really feel good until you show people you know what i mean it feels good but it's like it's a different step yeah it's a different people step here and it's like oh okay that's why we were doing this well it can easily way. feel like we just haven't been doing anything right you know like the t- last two years is like kind of a blur because it's just it's like this weird limbo that I feel like I've been in for two years now where it's like, I'm not like, I'm doing all this stuff, but it's silent and nobody knows about it. But also it's life's completely different and figuring that out. And so it's just, we've, for me personally, I've just been in this like weird, you know, 
limbo state and i think that being able to finally start rolling this stuff out i mean we got the first single out the album name and art announcement you know rex absolutely killed the artwork for us this time and uh it's just it's exciting because it kind of is like oh wow we have done a lot like even though it can feel like we've kind of been sitting around and doing whatever it's like it's people are going to see it there's there's so much stuff uh that went into this and there's still a lot of work for us to do on it well it also because in the past we've never like just taken this much time off it's like if we're working on something that's pretty consistent or we'll take a trip and finish an album but this has been over a span of two years so it does feel like you're not that productive right yeah i mean usually we'd be like hey we go on tour in three weeks we have one week set aside to Mm -hmm. record this album then we get one week at home and then we're back on the road you know so yeah i feel like uh we're used to touring being somewhat of a gauge of how busy we are yeah and uh that has been a weird adjustment yeah we're a bunch of homebodies now (laughs) yeah i'm used to it (laughs) but uh, it was weird at first too just like seeing other bands get slots on tours and there was like not necessarily like jealousy but just knowing that like that would have been us and it was just, there's 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 a little envy there you yeah know, you miss it obviously yeah I'm, like i mean i miss playing shows absolutely and all that and so it, it it was weird just like a month later it's like a tour announcement or like you know that iration tour we we're supposed to go on um was like starting and you're just like damn like, yeah I, having I, to having to cancel a tour with uh iration and atmosphere who you know, atmosphere is one of Andy's was what was one of Andy's biggest influences when we started the band. I mean, I remember literally the weeks that uh, the band started in my garage. I remember driving around in your car listening to Atmosphere. So um, to have to cancel that tour, I remember that being just so difficult because it was like not only were we missing Andy like crazy, but knowing like man, like. Yeah, and and he was so pumped to go on that tour because oh, that dude, was he was so like I remember that last show we played with him at Red Rocks backstage, like him just being like, "Dude, yeah. look at this, bro, we're we're doing it. We're about to go on tour the Atmosphere, Iteration, blah, blah blah." So, um, you know, I think uh, the, the time that we took and the intention and meaning that was put behind every decision, especially the album, like the album to me, I'm the reason I'm so proud of it is because I feel like literally every decision we made every guitar part every bass part every drum part the way the vocals were done and and the other artists that have helped us finish the album i feel like they were all truly done from like our hearts as a band and uh you know it usually we wouldn't have time to do that with other albums yeah and and i I don't think we didn't do that with previous albums we've always been very like very you know hands-on with our music but this was like you know a, a, just a different level for us and i think it, it taught us a lot and i also think because of the importance of this to us all the people we had feature on the album it kind of translated to them knowing that they had to like really step up and they did for mm-hmm. sure yeah man it's it's really just wild that and, it actually came together and we like we fucking we pulled it off somehow but and, we yeah did do it, and and know? and going back to muse i feel like muse is such a great example of that like it just kind of has all of those elements in that song, you know, like reworking the ending. I remember, I mean, we probably spent five or six full days in the studio, maybe seven working on just that song yeah. from writing it with Andy to then finishing it. And you're know, like, dude, your guitar solo at the end is insane. It's, it's fu- like the most epic Tanner solo. <laughs> well, and it's funny because I think the most of the song is just two chords like yeah like originally it was just like a two chord acoustic song and then we got to build that ending which made it just even more you know yeah i remember hitting up danny and being like dude i want we want horns now because we just already had the strings it's like i think at the end we can do this because you know you brought in that like snare roll thing just to like do this big build up i kept picturing like the national like i love the national as far as like indie and like big sounding theatrical like music is and he added the horns and I'm like the line didn't feel right. And I sent him this like MIDI and I think he was on tour. And then he just like immediately came back with like this. It's really subtle and nobody's really going to be like, Oh, the horns come in right now, but it's just everything kind of builds up and there's stuff you almost can't even hear in there. Like there's like a little synth line that like pops in for one second that goes away. And um, I don't know. It's just this whole, the whole song just builds and builds and builds. 
But my favorite part, I think, is probably the bridge. Same. Dude, yeah. the bridge and all the string plucks <laughs> yeah. and all yeah. this, you know, stuff that they're doing that is just beyond what I have any idea how they do it. Yeah. It's just Dude, crazy. The, bridge is, the bridge is so beautiful. It's the moment in the song where everything just like opens up and his lyrics in the bridge are so awesome too. Yeah. You were teaching me lessons when I was so reckless. You were there for me. Like that's, that, that, the bridge really makes me feel emotional sometimes. Like yeah, that's for the a, first, dude, for the first year after Andy passed, probably it, even up until recently, that song, I could not listen to that song without like kind of breaking down. Uh, yeah, I think mo- mo- I, even <laughs> the people I show feel that way. You know, yeah. even it's not us. Everyone feel show, that way. Yeah. yeah, I have friends that I, I sent it to and they're just like, dude, I like started bawling 30 seconds in and like they knew Andy, but they weren't like super close with them. But they're obviously super close with me and they just know everything and how it's been going. It's just like, it's like, okay. And that's another one of those second guessing things throughout this whole process of the album. It's like, you know, how much of this is just because it's close to me, you know, like, is this so meaningful just because I was there or are other people going to feel the same way about it? And right now we're getting to see where that lies. Cause it, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. We just got to do what we think is best, but you know, it's this whole you're always in your head, especially in this situation of just like, you know, is, is this just me that like really cares about it because I'm been there for my whole life. My whole life has been put into this like moment that's finally happening right now. Or is it actually like as special as I think it is? And I I think it is actually as special as I I know exactly what you're saying though. There is a part of you that wonders like, is it just cause I'm so close to this? Is it just because Andy was my brother? You know, is it just, but I think, yeah, I don't know what you're saying. Well, there's also a lot of pressure, you know, that we feel. So it's like we're second guessing things because it's our last album. So we want it to be great and as good as it can be. So I think that's also some second guessing. It's like shit. This is our last one. So and also, like, anytime I've ever heard like you know a posthumous release from an artist, I kind of like think of it as less right off the bat because mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, they weren't right a part of it for the whole way through, and it's like. It's not really like, you know, the Mac Miller album, like the first time I was going to listen to it, I was kind of like, oh, this is just like what they did afterwards. It's like, but then I started listening to it. I was like, dude, this may be one of my favorite albums by him because it's just beautiful. You know, so there was also that pressure of, you know, how do we get past um, it feeling like we're just doing this to do this because we had a few songs left and more so being like, you know, we're just, we're finishing what we started and we, we all did this together and, you know, we're doing what we feel is the right move and it's fucking it turned out way better than i ever could imagine yeah yeah, that is an interesting thing uh i feel like there were certain key moments throughout the creation of the album that made me feel as if he was there in a sense like i remember you saying that the first the first time we opened up the sessions and really worked on the songs up in globe Globe, with, with, with keller um you saying like, you know, it kind of feels like he's here because we're listening to his voice all day. We're, we're doing the same thing we'd always do with him. We're in the studio all day long for like 12, 14 hours working on the songs. So there was that. And then, you know, doing special things like bringing in his favorite artists yeah. and, and bringing in his family to help with, you know, additional recording stuff and, and listen to the songs and ask for their feedback. Like, hey, what do you guys think about this? What do you think about this? Seeing what their favorite songs were. There was like a lot of... Uh, doors that kind of opened up after he passed that um, with any other album in the past that just wasn't possible because with something with something changing like Andy leaving us it it just kind of I don't know it there's a lot of like beautiful things along the way that I feel really helped the album get done it was also really fun showing the his family like along the way like as songs came about, like <laughs> dude, it was, seeing their reaction to everything yeah. was a good feeling. Dude, for sure. And I think uh, I view I view this as like a big A and B section. It's like the first A section was of, for us getting through this was working on all of the new music and becoming closer with Andy's family. And then this, this, now, this B section was just started is like showing the world. You know what I mean? Getting yeah. the story out there, showing people how special Andy was and how special the band is and like our bond that we've had for almost 17 years, you know, like it's, it's going to be the next part. This B section to me is like the part 
where it helps us heal further and like get through this and and show people like hey even if something really really bad happens to someone that you love and care about like there's still there's still like a way through if 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 everyone comes together and to me the album encompasses that it's like shows people like hey look at look at all of us man look how all of us came together over this and like we're going to create like a new beginning and something beautiful and like start this new era from it it was cool to be able to bring we brought jim chavez and the family into the studio and he did some backing vocals on a song and uh it was just like watching him kind of like light up and turn back into the performer that he has always been to and um i don't know it's just the the family has supported us like all the way through and that was another scary thing that you know you don't know like right when we're starting to do the album obviously we knew they would want us to do it but it's like that's really fucking important as if do they approve of how this is going and um stuff and so like having their backing and their support and you know it it was hard because we couldn't show them songs for a really long time and we had them all but we had to be like we, we just can't share them yet and to finally be able to like sit with them all and watch them like experience the album and uh, I don't know. It's just it's been cool. It's been rewarding. I think sure. Jim still wants his vocals up, though. Yeah, he definitely still wants his. He vocals does. Up. He told Sorry, he he, uh, he dropped some speakers off at the studio the other day, and he he told he mentioned that to me. <laughs> uh, we're gonna have Jim on the podcast too. Yeah. So Andy's dad, I think Andy's dad and his sister are gonna come on the yeah, podcast pretty on soon. soon. But yeah, another thing to bring up too, which is kind of crazy, you know, looking at things from their perspective as as Andy's family, you know, like I think the courage that they've had stepping into this whole process of like being a part of us making the album and you know that's got to be so difficult because every time we all get together every time we're talking to them about album stuff it's like it is another indicator that he's gone Mm -hmm. so it's it's very difficult and i i feel like you know i wouldn't have been surprised if at some point they were like hey we can't do this. this is too much for us right now but instead they were like you know what you guys have to do this we have to do this and i think i hope that when when people you know hear the new music and and they like eventually hear the entire album they can feel that you know and they can feel like man you know everyone really pushed through cuz we're not only doing it for ourselves it's you know we we have to put it out for Andy and finish it for him too and and <laughs> they understand that you know and that's yeah. how they feel also yeah i mean the amount of trust that they have to have in us to do the right thing for like his legacy and their family it's like that's big you know and they've never once like gotten in the way and tried to tell us like hey don't do this or don't do that like they let us do what we always do and make the album the way we would have you know and but they fully backed us and fully supported us and um yeah it's been pretty incredible to just have their you know support throughout everything if Jim could change something he'd probably remove some of the cuss words yeah but hey to Andy's defense this is the cleanest album I think we've ever made. <laughs> yeah. Like, like honestly, I think it's like the cleanest. I never thought about that. I guess it is. It, it, is, it yeah. is by far, I think, the cleanest, <laughs> like most child-friendly Catastro album I think we've made to date. Yeah, there's still some parts. There's still some classic Andy. <laughs> yeah. uh, there's still some I classic. Could, I can think of a few. <laughs> there was some where they, when we were sitting in the studio with the Chavez family, I, we, the song would start and I'd be like, oh, here we go. Let's see how they, <laughs> how they react. But you know, they have to be used to this since Andy was like 16 rapping. Uh, they got a kind of crash course and just being like... When he right, was rapping like Eminem. When he was rapping like yeah. Eminem, yeah. Yeah. It's so funny. It's going to be... Yeah, it's going to be wild, dude. And... uh yeah we also have the first run of merch for the album out in a couple days i believe the summer goodies the summer it's the summer season of catastrophes until the end of time we're doing a lot of stuff that we've never done too like items yeah yeah what do we got Am I allowed to speak about yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, speak, speak about it. it. Speak on it, Tanner. Well, we got the Zippo lighters, right? Yeah. Zippo brand, Z- actually. The real ones, not yeah. those janky-ass ones you buy like the smoke shops. Um, yeah, we, we don't have... want you guys looking like losers no. showing up to the party with a little big <laughs> like, lighter. Oh, my dude. lighter doesn't work. Oh, how embarrassing. We've got the Nalgene water bottles. Nalgene water bottles, baby. Yeah, so for all those like... outdoors people like Ryan, you know, Ryan's definitely going to be you're... hitting the canals with oh, his with yeah. his Nalgene, right? You'll catch more carp. Yeah. yeah. It'll they, make you catch more carp for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, we got some new shirts. We got koozies. Koozies. For your ice cold brewskis. We got some, we got some slides that were 
absolutely chosen just because we saw a photo of them and we're like, yeah, Andy would uh, be wearing those for sure. Yeah, I remember saying, I don't think I'll ever wear those, but I know Andy would. (laughs) And then one of the most, uh, I'm very excited about the hat with the K on it because it's the same hat that Andy is wearing on the album cover. Yeah. So that's pretty, that's pretty cool. Got some new bucket hats too. Oh, I forgot about that. Buckets. Yeah, we got a lot of stuff coming. It's a, and that's all coming together, like literally the morning of us recording this. So that's why we're it's yeah. so fresh. But it's been so much like... Otherwise, I would not remember any of this. Hasn't it felt like everything's just been so slow because we're like taking our time and, you know, we have to work on so many other people's schedules and our own. And then now it's like, all right, we have a million things to do. And every day it's like a million phone calls. And, you know, for a couple of weeks or like for a week or so, I was just like, dude... I am so overwhelmed feeling because I've gotten so used to not having this whole other aspect in my life. But it also feels really good to have that like purpose and finally like have a goal that we've been going for. And that's what's kind of got me through all the hardest shit over the last few years with, you know, the grief and just like mourning loss of our friend, but also like mourning the life that I thought was going, you know, we had our whole world planned out and having this one goal to always work on is like been massive for us there's a tiny part of me that makes me like not want to give it out because it's like it's ours and we get to hold on to this but it was hard it was hard to start making the album but it's also like you know it it just feels better getting it out there you know what i mean so it's like yeah it's hard to start it's kind of it's hard to finish it's hard to finish too but but it's also like we it's the right time like and you never know if things are going to feel right or when they are. And that's been this whole unknown on this. It's like, yeah, we're not, we can't go and do a massive, you know, national tour for two months and do that. Like it's good. It's just different now, but there's all these things where we've kind of learned already in the last few years. It's like, we can't say like, we're never able to do this or that because all these other completely different opportunities will open up. And um, it's just been fun kind of navigating that. And finally, like, you know, for the first time getting good news, like that feels good because for a year and a half, it was just like, this is bad. This is bad. This is bad. Yeah. There's kind of been just like a dark cloud over the band in general, just like us not knowing what the future is. So. Right. And like, you know, for goals on people that hear it's like, yeah, this song Muse is definitely like a more emotional and heavy song, but I want people to have a good time. I don't want them to, I don't want it to just be this really sad, it's just a memorial kind of thing, but it's more of like a celebration. And, you know, the album has so many different sides to it and sounds, but it all fits really well together. And it kind of encompasses what we've done in the past where we're always switching sounds. I think we did it all in one here and it just feels like what, like it feels like a catastrophe album to me, you know? I mean, yeah, I think Muse, like I hope people feel this vibe of kind of like you said, celebration, but uh, it's like transformation and not only that, but uh, like hope. Yeah. Like that song makes me feel very hopeful. And uh, I think it also shows a side of Andy that uh, for people that have been listening to our band for a long time, they know that side of him exists. And I think that they're going to really feel something when they, uh, when they listen to that song. It's yeah, mu- it's a much more vulnerable song than when we put uh, out in yeah. the past. We still got the party bangers on it, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, we might be starting off a little gloom, gloomy, but yeah. uh, there's there's bangers on there. There's <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. It's very. Uh, I don't know. I just feel like it's well rounded. I'm proud of you know all of us and like just it's it's such a weird position being just the three of us now because everything relies on all of us. So it's like you know, if Tanner's not into something, like we can't do it. And if I'm not into something, it's just, it can't happen. So right. we before used to do we the voting like, thing. Yeah. <laughs> we used to be able to vote like and be like, Hey, rules. I just think you're wrong, you know? And then <laughs> more, all of us think you're wrong. So, and I think but, we're much more sensitive now to everything. And it's like, okay, if you don't like that, we don't need to do it. And right. that's okay. Yeah. It's just, it's been this whole, you know, we're working on ourselves individually and we're working on ourselves as a group. And, it's taken a lot from everyone to get to this point where until the end of time is, is finally on its way. So 14 songs, man. Yeah. 14. It's crazy. We've only done like what? 12. I think 12 is our most 11 or 12. I think. Yeah. 
and there was all that debate on like do we keep some of them and keep them for like bonus tracks or something but we just it, it's right we got to do the whole thing we got to give everyone the last album and take it from there yeah yeah it's been interesting too to see how um i feel like you know if if Katasha was like a two-man band and Andy passed and one of us was left with this task to like do this on our own, I, I just don't think that... I know I wouldn't have been able to do that without you guys. So it's Hell like... No. No, no so it's like the idea that the three of us just had to... You know, we really had to just like, in a lot of ways, I think like man up and do what we knew we needed to do because... That's one cool thing too is that there was never even the thought or idea or discussion that's like, hey, we're done. It was like, it was like we all just knew, right? Like the moment after he passed, like, oh, we're going to work on the music. Yeah. It was just the first question was like, when? I remember like days after getting back from California, I like went on a drive and I just like forced myself to listen to the little pieces of songs we had because I was like, I can't break down every time I hear my band you know this is such an important part of my life and it's been it's been the most important part of my life you know since we were kids and so it's like I have I remember like physically like desensitizing myself to it to like get through it and I forget that our fans haven't had any of that like luxury of having this thing to look forward to and having that and we've kind of told them like you know it's coming like we're working on it but I don't think they're ready for what we've actually put into this. I forget that too. Even when I would send my brother like our demos and stuff, he'd be like, dude, I can't listen to this right now. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I've yeah. listened to it a million times. That's why. But I think I was the opposite in you. Of, I didn't listen to anything until we went to Matt's, I think. Ugh. Just because I didn't, I was just wasn't, yeah, I didn't yeah. want to, you know? For sure. And dude. that's why that first sessions was so like draining and heavy for me, I think. Yeah, that's what I, what I remember saying to you. I was just like, it feels like there's a ghost in the room. Because I remember laying on the couch in, you know, Globe, Arizona. And I was nervous because recording was always my favorite, like one of my favorite parts of being in a band. It was always the most fun, especially because of Andy. Yeah. And we would party and we would cook food and we, it was like real camaraderie. And having, like knowing that Andy wasn't going to be there and driving out there and like just knowing what you were driving out there for, like it felt like the longest drive of my life, just mm -hmm. getting an hour and a half away. Cause I was like, what's, is this, this gonna be a nightmare? Like it could be <laughs> just the worst thing I've ever had to try to do. And then immediately, like we said earlier, like it just felt right. Like it just felt like every other time we were in the studio and Andy was late because he was too, <laughs> too busy, you know? And um, it was just like, you just listen to, his voice over and over and over again and i remember getting home and just like realizing how heavy and how hard it was to do that and then also realizing like we got to do this at least like 10 to 20 more times and yeah it's <laughs> realizing we gotta, that we just scratched the surface right i remember sitting so before we did that initial trip to go work on the songs i remember sitting at home like i had to because there's only two songs on this entire album that were not recorded on all of our, like my gear. Cause we were all recording. I know say this first. One of the really cool parts about this album is that it was heavily recorded by the band and Matt, Matt Keller helped us record too. But like, there's only two songs on the album that were not vocals recorded by me. So all the demos that we had that we were all working on together, right before we had to go on that first trip to work on the music, I, ha I remember having this very intense fear and anxiety of like, I have to open these up and prep these sessions for this week. And I hope I did a good job on like recording these properly because if I mess something up and it's a good take on Andy's end, but like I screwed something up, we're not going to be able to have that to work on. And so after going, th I remember that being very difficult for me, like sitting alone and like having to like kind of get things ready for us to look at even yeah and feeling like damn i hope i did a good job on this and um every every one of those is they were all, every single song on this with andy's part almost every song were scratch takes so these were the throwaway placeholders where andy you know sing blah 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 
We'll start getting some mel- like melody ideas. We'll first hash them out next too. week. A lot of first ones. Uh, yeah, like, I remember he was like kept wanting to add harmonies on songs, and I'm like, dude, we only have like two days. Like, just let's move on. We'll get to it next week. And it's like you don't have next week. Yeah, you Andy know? would always do that. Like anytime, like like some of the demos that were recorded, you know, that we ended up using for the album you'd be tracking him and I, yeah, I would tell him like, dude, let's just do that later. It's fine. And yeah. he'd always want to stack the parts out and like, thank God he wanted to do that. Cause you know, we had all these takes that we could go through and look at. And I remember that being uh really difficult, but also really fun. Like, cause Matt has, you know, like mentored me and trained me over the years to be like a competent engineer and like know how to record things properly. And so it's really for me personally, it's been so cool in retrospect to see that relationship I've had with Matt over the years and how he helped put me in a position to where I'd be able to record mostly all of Andy's vocals for the, for our final album without knowing at the time that's what we were doing, you know, like, so that's another thing that I I think about now as just like producing and engineering for other artists too. Like I sometimes have the thought now, like, man, this could be the last time I record this person. You know, like this could be the last time I ever see this person. Who knows? Like I better do a good job working on this song or, and that could be said, not just for like recording somebody, but you know, being in the room with someone and songwriting, it's like, we never know when the last time that we're going to have to do this with this person. So you better give it your all and like really, really try, I guess, you know, that's something it has taught, taught me. Yeah. In the beginning stages, it was really like, oh man, like, why don't we have more? I wish we had more. I wish we had this. I wish we had that. And then near the end of it, it was kind of like, dude, I can't believe we have this or I can't believe yes. we got that, you know? And it was, it really had this whole switch. And I think uh, people, I don't know, listening to it, they're going to get that first initial. It's probably going to be difficult for a lot of people to like hear the whole thing at once. But I think over time too, it's going to grow on them. Like it's grown on us where now it's like, oh, this one's exciting. This one's not necessarily gonna make me cry every time i hear it anymore i just really like this song now it's like i think that you know it's gonna move in waves like it's moved for us with them so or at least i hope so there's been a lot of little like cool surprises along the way too where like we were struggling with this like you know 10 second 15 second part in the middle of a song and i would just be like you know what let me just go look one more time and i'd open up an old session and and find like an ad lib that i didn't didn't see previously and we're like yo what if this works and then like we toss that in there put some effects on it it's like oh that's perfect like that fixes that part so there's been like cool moments like that where we accidentally stumble across something andy did in like an old demo that we all did together and it ends up being the final missing link for this song or you know not just his vocals but like a guitar part or like having the time to do that and like really just it's been so cool to see it like just fall into place after yeah. after not knowing if it's even possible and it's like once we like just started doing it and we like relaxed a little bit about it it was like okay things just are start it's almost like it was supposed to happen mm-hmm. it's the way it feels finishing it yeah so good job guys yeah, good, job. good job until the end of time man until the end of time yeah everything is done with intention and you know kind of to a fault i think sometimes where we're like overthinking overthinking it and it's like i'm gonna redo this baseline again for no goddamn reason you know or like with mixing notes and stuff where it's like it's never gonna be perfect and we want it to be flawless but it's but some of the imperfections but some of the imperfections are my favorite part in the album so it's like yeah it's just been this huge task and this like daunting mountain that like you know you're so far away from and the closer you get the bigger it looks and you're kind of like what are we doing and now it's it's finally fucking finished and i don't know we should probably wrap this episode up soon but like i don't know yeah i'm proud of it i'm excited for everyone to get to hear it and thank you for sticking with the podcast over the last like six months we haven't been able to say really a single thing about the band and so we appreciate you guys still listening around we got a lot of really cool things coming up for you there and um yeah, I don't know. What's cool too is that I know we talked about a lot today, but we kind of only scratched the surface on the album itself. So like once things start rolling out and once you get to hear more songs, we're going to be going even more in depth with how the album was made. And there's so much more stuff that we want to talk about that we can't share yet because right now, you know, go listen to Muse and this is us welcoming you to the next chapter of Catastro. Yeah. Thanks for having me, guys. <laughs> 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 He's out.